Okay, in section 6.1, we're going to be talking about polynomials, and we're going to add and subtract them. But the first thing we're going to talk about is how we determine the degree of a polynomial and the name we give it based on its degree. And then we'll talk about um, how we can also talk about a polynomial based on its number of terms. The first thing we're going to look at is how do you determine the highest exponent? Okay, so you look through the polynomials and the highest exponent, like in number 6, would be 5, and number 5 would be 4. So you're looking for the highest exponent. The, the ones that just have a single x and you don't see an exponent, it's understood to be 1. So when you go to a constant term like this, it really has x to the 0. You just don't see it because anything to the 0 power is 1, which becomes 6 times 1, which is why it's just equal to 6. So it does have an exponent, it's just you don't see it because it's to a power of 0 and anything to the power of 0 is 1. So you, first of all, you have to look and determine what the highest exponent is and then that's the degree for the polynomial. Now each term has a degree, but we're looking for the highest term, okay? So for number 1, the degree is 0. And since the degree is zero, this is called a constant polynomial. It's constant because it doesn't have a variable. It's not going to change. It's going to remain steady. It's going to stay constant. It's a constant polynomial. It doesn't have a variable. It's not going to change. All right, the degree for number two, the highest exponent, is a one. And because it has a degree of one, this is a linear polynomial. And we studied linears earlier in the year. All right, look at number three. Number three has 4x squared plus 6x plus 1. The highest exponent is 2, so the degree is 2. And so we call this quadratic. Those are the polynomials we're fixing to end our semester solving and looking at different things. That's why we're doing polynomials. We can learn to factor and we know what to call them and then that's what we're going to end with is a chapter over quadratics. All right, the next <clears throat> polynomial has an x to the third as the highest exponent. So we're going to say the degree is three because the highest exponent is three and this is called a cubic. And when you get to algebra two, you'll go back through these again. All right, number five has a degree four. This is called a quartic. You can try to remember that by, <coughs> excuse me, the fact that you have four quarters and a dollar. It's quartic, and it's also similar to quadratic in that it has the even exponent. So x squared, x to the fourth. And there's other things you'll learn about end behaviors and the shape of the graphs and things that make them similar. <coughs> excuse me. And then number six, the highest exponent is five, so the degree is five, and this one's called quintic. And we could keep going, but that's, that's pretty much it. Those will be the ones that you will see in Algebra 2. For us, we will stop with quadratics in this Algebra 1 class. So that is what you call the different polynomials based on the degree. Now, we can also talk about polynomials by their number of terms. Terms are separated with plus and minus signs, okay? So if I look at number two, five times x, that's one term. But five times x plus seven, the five x and seven make two terms. So terms are separated with plus and minus signs. So looking at number one, there's one term. We call that a monomial. Number two has two terms, so we call that a binomial. Number three has one, two, three terms, so we call that a trinomial. Number four has four terms, we just call that a polynomial. We have four terms. No special name for that. 
The only special names are for a monomial, binomial, and a trinomial. And I'll leave the next three for you to name, and then you can look at the completed notes and see if you did those correctly. Remember, the completed notes will be posted after I teach the lesson in class. All right, so we'll do a few examples. All right, so here are some monomials, and we just want to find the degree. So the highest exponent, that would be 1. Remember that has an x to the 0 we don't see, so the degree is 0. When you have multiple variables and multiple exponents in a single term, you add those together, you would get 8 for the degree. The degree here would be 4, here would be 7, and here would be 10. The next thing we're going to focus on is writing a polynomial in standard form, which means you start with the highest exponent, and then you just go down. So if you look at number 7, the highest exponent has the square, so we would change it to 4x squared plus 3x. And then it said, name the polynomial by degree. Well, based on the degree, it would be quadratic. And then it said, name it by the number of terms, so that means it would be a binomial because it has two terms. If you look at number 8, 5x cubed is the high, has the highest exponent. You do have like terms you can combine together. 4x plus 7x would be 11x. And then bring down that minus 1. So this is, the degree is 3, so this is cubic. And it has 1, 2, 3 terms, so it is a trinomial. And number 9, 8x squared has the highest exponent. The next one would be plus 2x, and then your constant term comes last. So this is a quadratic. And it has 1, 2, 3 terms, so this is a trinomial. All right, the other things that we're going to, the last two things we're going to do in this section are add and subtract polynomials. So I'm just going to go through and do every other one, and then if you want to practice the ones that I leave blank, you can, and then look at the completed notes. Like terms have to have the same variable with the same exponent, so it, it's pretty easy. I feel pretty good about you guys doing this. Well, actually, I feel really good because I think you guys can do this, but if you have 3x squared plus 5x squared, that's just going to give you 8x squared. It's like if you have two pencils or two pens, and you want to add five more. Then you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Wasn't that what it was? Let's see. Yeah, 3x squared plus 5x squared. So you have 3 and then you put five more, you have eight total. So you're only adding the coefficients in front. You don't do anything with the variable term when you're adding and subtracting. All right, so if you look at number 12, you have four x cubed times y minus one x cubed times y. So four minus one would be three x cubed times y. That's, I mean, this would be 1 minus 9, 1x one cubed minus 9x cubed would be negative 8x cubed. And then these are identical variables and exponents. So if you have 2 of them plus 9 of them, that would give you 11m cubed times n cubed. All right, then as far as adding and subtracting, Depends on how it's written. These are with parentheses. So the first thing I'm going to do is drop my parentheses. Now, if you want, you can rearrange them so your like terms are next to each other. So I see I have 5r cubed plus 6r cubed. Those go together. And then I have plus 8 and plus 3. So 5r cubed plus 6r cubed would be 11r cubed. 
and then eight plus three would be 11. So you can rearrange them if you want to. You don't have to. I'll show you um, number 21 without rearranging. So I'm adding, I'm just gonna drop my parentheses. Now you don't have to rearrange if you don't want to. You can say all right, five X squared plus 15 X squared is 20 X squared. And then three plus two would be five. So you can do it that way. I try to double underline or single underline or switch colors. So I know what, what I put together. All right, let's look at subtraction. If you're gonna make a mistake, it's gonna happen with subtraction every time. I can drop the parentheses down, but then I have this negative. And if you remember when we did distributive property back at the beginning of the semester, when you have a negative in front of parentheses, you have to distribute that negative one to everything inside. You're subtracting everything. So negative one times three X becomes a negative three X, and negative one times that positive five becomes a negative five. That's where you're gonna make a mistake is that you don't change that sign on the second or third or fourth term. Now you can look and see, what do you need to put together? Well, x squared we know comes down first, practice in putting it in standard form. Then negative three x would be your next term. And then you have minus two minus five. So if you did negative two minus five on your calculator, that is negative seven. So let's look at number 22, it's subtraction. I'll drop the parentheses on the first one because I don't have to, I'm not changing anything. But on here, remember I have that negative one that I have to distribute through the parentheses. So negative one times four X cubed becomes negative four X cubed. And negative one times nine becomes negative nine. And then you can combine your like terms or you can regroup if that's what you prefer to do. But six X cubed minus four X cubed is two X cubed. And 17 minus nine would be a positive eight. And then sometimes we've got three terms. So let's see if we can do, um, let's see, which one should I do? I'll do 24 and then I'll leave 25 and 26 for you to look at the completed notes. All right, so y cubed comes down minus four y squared minus two. Now I have this negative in front of the parentheses, so that's got to change the six y cubed, the positive four, and the negative six y squared. So negative one times six y cubed is negative six y cubed. Negative one times positive four is negative four. And negative one times a negative six y squared becomes a positive six y squared. And let's see, I have cubes is my highest exponent, so that's gonna come first. So y cubed, or one y cubed, minus six y cubed would be negative five y cubed, because one minus six is negative five. And then you have your squared terms. So you have negative four y squared plus six y squared. So negative four plus six would be a positive two y squared. And then you have a constant term. You have negative two minus four. So negative two minus four would be negative six. So if the subtraction is the only thing that I'm worried about because that's where I see the most mistakes. So if you're not careful and you're not writing your problems down and working them, if you're trying to do it in your head and skip steps, you're gonna make a mistake if you're not careful. So write it down, do the work, and be careful.